up. That's why it's really important to cover the ground down here to keep oxygen reacting with your carbon. Oxygen in the air that reacts with carbon in the soil creates what? Carbon dioxide. There goes your organic matter. So it's the tillage that creates carbon dioxide in the atmosphere more than, in my opinion, the exhaust. And not only do you release the carbon into the atmosphere as carbon dioxide, you're not pulling carbon dioxide back in. Like I said, it's coming out, it's the breath, it's the exhalation of the bacteria in the soil. We breathe in oxygen, we exhale carbon dioxide. Bacteria do the same thing. Fungi do the same thing. They breathe in oxygen, they exhale carbon dioxide. That's where it's coming from, their bodies. And plants capture it, turn it into sugar, and use it in, in photosynthesis for upstairs, downstairs sugar production. Magnesium is the miracle mineral. Everybody's deficient in magnesium. It's amazing. It's one of the best uh, ACE inhibitors there is, too, by the way, if you have hypertension. Magnesium. Uh, carrier for phosphorus. The molecule of chlorophyll looks very much like, interestingly enough, the molecule of hemoglobin in the blood. Hemoglobin in the blood has what in the center of the molecule? Iron. That's why if you cut yourself and you taste your blood, it has that irony taste, right? Hemoglobin has iron in the molecule. The molecule of chlorophyll, the green blood, looks almost exactly like hemoglobin. Slight differences and the big difference is that the core element in the center of that molecule is magnesium instead of iron. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that an elephant standing in the room? The blood of plants, the blood of animals. Very similar. All right. 300 enzyme systems depend on magnesium. 300. That's a lot. Very important to a synergist with calcium and phosphorus to make hard bones and hard teeth. Alkalize the body, pH. Activate the B vitamins. The pituitary gland, master gland in the brain, is activated by magnesium. It's one of the most common mineral deficiencies in the United States. Where would you get magnesium if you didn't take it as a supplement? It's obvious I gave the clue away. If it's the core element of chlorophyll, where is it found? Vegetables that have green in them which is also a good source of parent omega-3. So, do we eat enough greens in this country? I doubt it. I don't think we'd have a magnesium deficiency, unless the plants, of course, are grown on magnesium deficient soils, and that's typical. Potassium is another alkaline mineral. Now, when you understand something, Magnesium, calcium, sodium, and potassium are the major alkali cationic minerals. They ones have a positive charge. They are needed to be in a proper ratio in the soil and in the diet in order for us to have the proper assimilation of those minerals so that we can build cells, repair cells, activate the immune system, the hormones, and all of that. And this is generally the problem with a lot of our fertility farming is not based on those balances. We have excessive potassium, we have deficiencies of calcium, it's, it's all over the map, and as a, as a consequence, when you get these very imbalanced elements in a forage or a plant or an apple, you end up with plant problems, and you end up with animal deficiencies. That's why it starts in the soil. Sulfur is the medicinal mineral, and you can see sulfur is part of all of these medicinal important compounds. Heparin, which is a blood thinner. Biotin, which is in the B vitamin family for connective tissue, hoof and horn and hair. Lipoic acid, liver detoxifying compound. Glutathione, one of the most important immune augmenting uh, compounds. Keratin, you know, for hair and uh, connective tissue fibrinogen, a blood thickener. So blood thinners and blood thickeners. Insulin, sulfolipids, collagen, which is the cement that glues the cells together, glucosamine and chondroitin, if you ever those for basically the degenerative joints, all contain sulfur substances in them. In fact, all the medicinal herbs, if you think about them, are sulfur based. We'll talk about that. So sulfur leaves the soil, especially in sandy soils, pretty quickly. 
It's an anion. What's an anion? Negative charge, cation, positive charge. Soil has a negative charge. So what do you think happens when you have a negative charged anion like sulfur coming up against a soil particle that has a negative charge? They repel. So your anions tend to leave your soils, particularly if they're sandy. So sulfur leaches, nitrate leaches, boron leaches, these are all anions that leave. So you have to put it on on a regular basis. And interestingly enough, most of the fertilizer companies don't even test soils for sulfur. And it's just as important as phosphorus in terms of how much plants use and to build all these proteins. You gotta build, if you wanna build quality protein in an animal, you wanna build quality protein in, in, in produce, you have to have sulfur. You can't build quality protein without sulfur. It's a very critical element. They don't talk about it. You go to the conventional guys who test for forages, they don't test for sulfur. That's a salt, you gotta test for sulfur to find out whether or not you got too much nitrogen. It's really, really that critical. And it's old science. It blows my mind just how negligent this is. Like sulfur, what's that? Oh, we're getting it out of the air. Really? The soil test doesn't show it. The forage test doesn't show it. I guess we eat air. Who cares? It's in the air. It's not in the soil. It's not in the plant. It isn't there as far as I'm concerned. So it's only found in protein. Only found in proteins. Does that tell, is that the elephant standing in the room? If it's only found in proteins, does that suggest that maybe protein has something to do with sulfur? Adamantly, yes. Trace minerals. I showed you this slide earlier, 1940 slide, trace elements and their direct correlation between resistance to diseases. 1950s work, Albrecht, the guy, what did he say? Okay, soil treatment, they found out, they measured, let's say, let's not check, check for protein, let's check for two essential amino acids. Remember, there was eight essential amino acids? They checked for two, tryptophan and methionine. What did they find out? Well, when you had magnesium alone, it bumped it up. When you had trace elements alone, it bumped it up some more. When you put the magnesium and the trace elements together in the soil, it really skyrocketed. And then they went one step further. They said, okay, fine, there's more methionine, there's more tryptophan in this um, lucerne, also known as alfalfa. So what? Well, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. So they fed the lucerne of all these different varieties of tests to rabbits, and they said, what happens to the rabbits? Well, the weight gain skyrocketed because the quality went up of the methionine and the tryptophan. So not only are you making a healthier rabbit, it also more efficiently grows. They grow better. That could be your children that grow better, as well as your rabbits or your cows or your pigs. Quality doesn't just create quality, it creates quantity. It creates efficiency. Why shouldn't it? Another elephant standing in the room. Zinc, the energy micronutrient. Nobody puts zinc on their ground, too expensive. It is expensive, but that's why they call it a trace element. You use small amounts. You don't put tons of zinc on, you put pounds of zinc on. And you budget it. If you can't put on all five or 10 or 20 pounds of zinc, you put on a few pounds every year over five or 10 years. Who cares? Some is better than none. If you need it, you need it. And it's essential for phosphorus to be taken up by the plant. Now you're going to see that these minerals are not isolates. They work together. And I'll show you the mineral wheel that really illustrates that. It regulates plant sugar. This is the uh, drought trace element. Drought resistance depends on adequate amounts of zinc. Works with vitamin A for the immune system. This gland behind your sternum is called what? The thymus gland. If you eat it, it's called the sweet bread. Anybody ever eat sweet bread? It's not a southern dish. Sweet bread's not a southern dish. And this is the master immune gland. This turns immature stem cells that come out of the bone marrow into killer cells, T cells, natural killer cells. It's a hormone called thymic hormone and it converts the adolescent stem cells that want to be grown up T-killer cells into T-killer cells.
It's a rite of 